Seven o'clock. In for the pledge, please. May 2nd. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carried. A motion to accept the financial report and payment of the bills. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Budget amendments, Steve? Yes, I have one budget amendment tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, budget amendment number 2012-017 to recognize $1,500 of forfeited seized funds to the town uh, for use of funding undercover police activities. Okay, I have a motion to accept budget amendment 2012-017. So Make a motion to approve budget amendment 2012-017. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. All right, um, I'll do this. Um, Proclamation here. Let me have a proclamation relay for life day. Proclamation of the Mayor and Commissioners of the Town of Elkton declaring June 1st, 2012 as relay for life day in the town of Elkton, Maryland. Whereas for 27 years, communities have come together through great relay of life activities to celebrate the cancer survivors and caregivers and to remember the loved ones lost to the, the disease, and whereas the Relay for Life empowers individuals and communities to fight back against cancer, and whereas money raised during Relay for Life, the Town of Elkin supports the American Cancer Society's mission of saving lives and creating a world with less cancer and more birthdays by helping people get well and stay well and by finding cures for the cancer, and whereas in 2011, Relay for Life activities funded more than $150 million in cancer research. Now therefore be it resolved that the Mayor and Commissioners of the Town of Elkton hereby proclaim June 1st, 2012, Relay for Life Day in the Town of Elkton and encourages all citizens to participate in a Relay for Life event at six, six o'clock on June the 1st, 2012 at Elkton High School. And when thereof we have unto set our hands and seal the Town of Elkton on the 16th day of May. I've got a motion to accept the proclamation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Um, 705, the public hearing on the fiscal year 2013 annual budget. This is the public hearing. I'm sorry. I mean, it's, that's all right, Aunt. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Lois Capone, and I'm co-chair of this year's Relay for Life. And I would like to invite each and every one of you to please come out. And if you've never been to a Relay for Life, you will be amazed. Um, and um, we would love to have you as our guest on June 1st at 6 o'clock. And uh, we thank you for the proclamation. You're welcome. As we, I know, I've been out there, and it does draw a big crowd, and they do a great job. They really yes. do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this public hearing is now open. Anyone wishing to speak in regards to? Just, just a question. Bob Sanders. 
Chief Bob Sam. He has a um, business that raises fish for release, and he's rented the ponds for you know, over 10 years. It's what the state used to do right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about the the uh, the old town hall, which has the Boys and Girls Club and the Open Alliance? Do they pay any rent? Mr. Mayor, I'm asking you about your budget. They do pay rent. They do pay rent. We pay it basically on the oh, whole building. Pay for them. Mm -hmm. You pay the rent above the fifty thousand that you give, them. and you pay the heat and electricity. Okay, that's answer my question. Go to page 12. It's the biggie. The total budget of $11 million, almost half of it is the police department. Are all of you, are you all aware of that? I mean, by looking at it, you did you to pick up on that, all of you. And you've all looked at your budget, except page by page. You got an increase in your salaries by $230,000. My figures are right. Your overtime. Has, has increased by $9,000 to $219,000. Then we go to page 16, the, the Public Works Department, and you reduce their overtime by $20,000. It's kind of amazing how one keeps getting more and more and some of the other departments get less and less. A police car is another thing which has been hacked about for a period of time. That's on page this looks on page 12 also. Mm -hmm. Page 12. Page 12. Mm -hmm. 288,066 dollars. That comes out to 48,011 dollars for one police car. I know the answer is going to be that they come completely equipped. That's the answer I'm going to get. I know that automatically. Just to bring you up to date on some of the other police cars around the county. Sheriff's Department buys Chevrolet and Powell patrol vehicles for $38,000. Two. Two. They take the equipment from the old car, put it in the new car. Saves them a lot of money. They're paying less for two cars than what you're paying for one. The New York Police Department does the same thing. I've got a nephew that's a policeman over there. He was a city cop in Boston for eight years. They do the same thing there. They pay, they replace the equipment with old equipment until the old equipment's bad, then they re replace it in police cars. <clears throat> You'd have a savings of about $156,000 if you would do that here. Of course, I think I'm talking on deaf ears because it was the same thing once before. Oh, my. Okay, and another thing that the police department in, in, uh, in um, Newark, the only time that they take them home if, they're, if they are actually on a case or are supervisory position, their patrolmen and, and beneath lieutenants or whatever may be do not take their police cars home like we do here in town. Saving on mileage. If you talk about 100,000 miles on a car, you can save a lot on mileage if they didn't take them home all the time. You got $146,000 in grants for two full-time policemen. After the grant, how long is the grant for? Two years, one year, what? Three. Three years. After that three-year period of time, we got to pick up the bill again. And that'll give you up to that'll give you 50 police officers in the town right here now. 50. 48. You've got now. Be up to 50. Well, 48 includes the, the two grants. For me. 48 count includes two positions funded by the grant. That's the two is within the 48. That's in there. That's right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> it's reading an article in the county paper of the day about what deposit and so forth. I know the town's too big for the sheriff to be doing what they want to do down there at $35 an hour, but I just wonder how much it costs per hour to put a policeman on the road here in Elkton. Does anybody know, roughly? Nobody know. Nobody even questions anything like that. <coughs> The state police in Northeast have 44 sworn officers that cover all of Cecil County. All of Cecil County. The county police department 
uh, there's 45 patrolmen on the road. They have a total of, of 80 that are sworn to handle uh, serving of papers, uh, investigations, a, a total of 80 to cover the whole county. We've got 48 that covers eight square miles. Eight square miles of what the town of Elton is. Eight square miles. They cover the whole county, serving papers, the court system, the whole nine yards. Sounds like we're just keep getting, we're getting over and over and over with more and more and more, and the, and the bills keep coming up and up. And you got the five top positions, with their benefits, are making a hundred thousand dollars. Now, are you are, are you are you all aware of the of the salaries of your department? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Am I correct when I'm saying that? A half that'll be a half a million dollars in this budget for five people in the police department. I don't think the sheriff makes that kind of money. He's got one heck of a bunch of people working for him. That's pretty much, I guess, what I had there. But I mean, it just it just seems like it's it's this keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't see where we're getting any more coverage from anybody. You've got downtown. You can go anytime you want to. You can you can go right downtown probably right now and buy drugs if you want it. You've got the hookers that are downtown because Mr. Reed and I have been approached by him coming right out of here not too long ago, right right out of the town hall, the hooker. You got people sleeping on the street right down here in, in the park bench at nighttime, and it seems like it, it's all just you're oblivious to it. And I don't understand that. But I think this budget is is pretty well inflated with a bunch of things that we could probably cut back on, at least cut back on that hundred and some thousand dollars for for these vehicles. I mean, that would be very simple. You've got a shop down there that was an automobile dealership, and I would certainly think that you could send these cars down there and have them replace whatever it may be. It doesn't even say what kind of cars you're buying here. Before, they used to be Crown Victorias. They're no longer made, but it doesn't even state in here what kind of car you're going to buy. Dodge Chargers. Dodge Chargers. So I suppose you can't take the equipment out of the Ford to put them in a Dodge Charger. Is that the, is that the answer? The what? Not the cages, they won't fit. They have to be re redesigned. Well, you mean the cages? The cages cost that much difference? You said not the cages. Well, you can buy the cages. There's a lot of equipment in those cars. Cars are 2,947 each. We buy them to perpetrate fleet services. So that's what we're paying 21,947 per unit. You're paying what now? 21,947. And the, all the additional costs is for equipment. A lot of equipment goes into police cars. Well, I know that, but what the old equipment, other there. people take it from one police car and put it in another. The sheriff does it, Newark Police Department does it, the Boston Police Department does it, but Elton can't do it. Well, we are. The computers and stuff. Yes. We, whatever we can use out of the Crown Bits, we will be used. Yeah, we okay. So you're still putting you're still putting twenty some thousand dollars additional in these each one of these cars. That, one other thing I had here, and I can't remember what it was now. There's about eighteen thousand dollars worth of equipment in there. Yeah, right. They are just somewhat unique this year. Is that they said to be a model car? What is it in that? Any papers here that that one will be? It had to do. It's two thousand twelve. It had to do with saving on leasing or a loan purchase of vehicles. Right. What's that about? What was well, that? We have about so what page is that on the That was on page two. Just we have 13 vehicles, loan proceeds. That, that's under income. Right. The, the borrowing of the, the money to pay for the nine vehicles that are being purchased. Uh, that would be accounted for in a budgetary basis of counting as revenue. Loan proceeds are accounted as revenue. You're borrowing money That's to buy vehicles. That's correct. And you call that income. Uh, in, in the budgetary basis of counting, that's correct. All right. Well, you, you'd have to show that revenue to offset the expenditure of the $300,000 for the vehicle. What? What, where, are the, where are these vehicles going that you're buying that you're saving money on them by, by getting a loan for them? Well, there's... Uh, Listen, there's I don't know me asking Mr. Mayor. It's his budget. Mm -hmm. well, where, where, where are these 13 vehicles person. coming from? Where are they for? Police cars. 
13 police cars you got in your budget down here for six police cars, not 13. No, no, no not 13, no, 13. There, there are six. There's one in planning. There's four focus in planning. There is a. Um, you get two, one in planning and one in building. Uh, that, that, that's correct. There is a, a truck in, um, in public works. Uh, there is six, and there's six uh, police vehicles. That's nine. Well, you got 13. It must be a misprint. Um, Where did we say 13? Maybe yeah, it's fiscal year 13. Yeah, fiscal year. On what page are you looking at? On two, two. Two. That's the Bible. Is that fiscal year 13? That's not 13 Yeah, that's that like 13. That's like 13. I just think you want to look at this and start doing your budget a little bit better. And it's amazing that you look back here and there's not anybody hardly in this town that's concerned about where the money's going. When they get their next bill with the with the water bills and so forth, they might be concerned then. But it's a shame that they're not concerned with it. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak in regards to the 2013 budget? All right. Then this public hearing is now closed. All right. Then um, what we need to do is uh, get a motion to. Uh, accept the uh, 2013 budget for introduction purposes only. We get a motion. To make it. motion to accept the budget for introduction purposes. A second. I'll second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Tim? My name is Tim Aylesworth. I'm the Executive Director of Local Government Insurance Trust. And on behalf of the uh, Trust Board of Trustees and our staff, I'd like to thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, I'm happy to be here tonight to present a $1,000 grant uh, to the, to the um, town uh, for truck safety and operating trading. Uh, just want to do a little reminding that the legit was created in 1987. We're celebrating the 25th anniversary uh, this year and it was created by the Maryland Association of Counties and the Maryland Municipal League and where they went together and along with 20 initial members uh, to create this trust. Uh, Elton participates in primary excess property, equipment, and crime coverage. Uh, and in addition to this, I would like to remind you that we offer training risk management courses uh, of which um, since uh, 135 employees have been to legit sponsor training in the last eight years and in addition to the grant uh, you're receiving tonight, um, in spring of 04, emergency vehicle operation course uh, was, was grant, a grant for $2,500, a flagger training for $1,000, uh, water and storm water staff education program, $1,300, uh, National Safety Council first aid, $900, police traffic radar, LIDAR instructor training, $2,500, and then last fall, a snowplow simulator training course for $7,700. Uh, in the current year, which is FY12, um, the, uh, Elkton, the town of Elkton is receiving approximately $20,000 in credits, which is roughly 10% of your annual premium. And with that, I would uh, like to present the check to uh, your city engineer, your director of the Department of Public Works, Mr. Hanley. Oh, to the mayor? Okay. Yeah, you, can, you can give it to Dan. Yeah. You can give it to Dan. He's the one that's going to do the training. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Thank you. And now you can hand it over to the financial. <laughs> 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 cut, cut the middleman. Just give it the middleman for a bottle. <laughs> Sorry, Megan. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really do. Thanks a lot. Take care. Okay, um, Lewis. I have Ordinance 3, uh, 2012, for adoption. Ordinance 3 has 212 uh, men's Title II Administration of Personnel Chapter 2.28 Police Pension Plan to comply with the federal legislation entitled Heroes Earnings Assistance Relief Act, Tax Act of 2008. This ordinance was introduced before the board on May 2nd. Amendments include effective July 1, 2009. Compensation shall include differential wage payments flexible to employees called to military service for more than 30 days. Military service shall mean Uniform Services in the Meaning of the Uniform Services Employment Reemployment Half Rights Act 
1994, that was the definition added to our pension plan. Effective July 1, uh, 2007, participants shall include any employee on leave of absence for military service. If the participant fails to again become an employee as a result of the employee's death while in military service or after July 1, 2007, the participant shall be entitled to receive credit for such military services in regards to the pension allocation. Death benefits in the event of the death of a participant, including a participant who is on leave of military on well, military leave prior to his or her benefit commencement date, the participant's beneficiary shall be entitled to receive as a single lump sum an amount equal to the participant's employee contribution benefit plus his or her transfer benefit. This is effective uh, upon uh, adoption. I recommend the court adopt it at this time. Okay, I make a motion to accept ordinance 3-2012. So moved. And second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. That's all I have. Okay. Any business? Um, just have a couple of things. Um, I mentioned that we got some more information update on um, US 40 and Maryland 213 traffic signal. Everybody keeps asking about the, what's going on up there. Uh, the contract is scheduled to start. Uh, should have been started this week, it's possibly next week. They estimated three to four weeks for completion. And that's of course the weather gets them under the weather or anything, but that whole intersection will be completely redone. Uh, the guard, U.S. guardrail project, um, uh, thing was um, fitted out April 26th. The notice to proceed is anticipated July 2nd, so they said they will keep us updated on when that project will begin. So we'll be putting the guardrail up from Perryville all the way to the Delaware line. Um, and then um, I think it was last week um, with the Parks and Rec and the our Recreational Center, we were able to take a tour of the Harvey Grace uh, Rec Centers and the Aberdeen Rec Center. No, Bel Air. Bel Air, I'm sorry. Bel Air. And um, had a tour of both of those areas. And um, also they incorporated with the Boys and Girls Club and um, they're very nice. It was a really uh, learning experience to see what they did do down there and what they have. I think I might have had a good time looking at it and getting some fresh ideas and see what, how we can incorporate some of those things in ours that we can hopefully get started. Okay, other than that, um, do I have Mary Jo? No business? I do not have any old business. The Recreation Center also included the opportunity for senior citizens on our tour. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, the other thing I have is um, I received a uh, letter from Dwayne, please. Um, his resignation uh, for, uh, from the Elkton Housing Authority uh, due to some medical uh, problems there. Uh, he has been forced to submit his re resignation. So. Keep in mind if anybody has any ideas or any further that would like to um, apply for that. We, we need another person on that board and um, talk to him and the time. Sorry to see him leave. He's done an excellent job. Um, some time ago, you all um, received an email from Lewis in regards to the fact that um, five thousand dollars that we had budgeted in our budget um, last year for the school crossing guards um, and that um, the county was not going to pay it due to the fact that they did not include it in their budget. So thus leaving us $5,000 short, um, which uh, was going to kind of hurt. But what I was able to do was to contact um, President Mullins and um, talk to him and he looked into it a couple of times and uh, then I had to go around to all the commissioners, so I talked to all the commissioners and uh, told them the circumstances, which the fact was that we were not notified that they did not budget it. So we did budget it, not knowing they didn't. So um, after talking to them all, it was suggested that uh, I send a letter to them that explained our, our, our stands here and uh, about it. Uh, and as of yesterday at their meeting, they did vote to give us our $5,000 back 
and we're taking it out of their fund balance. So we did accomplish that to get our $5,000 back to put in their our crossing guards. They are not uh, going to put it in their 2013 budget, so we will have to come up with the full amount now. And the other thing I was able to do in our budget to help save a little money is that, if you recall, um, Laura was asking for CPR classes. I think they were $90 per person. Right. I contacted the Red Cross, Pat Smite, and asked them if they could do anything to help us out a little bit. And they came through. Uh, now they're only going to charge us $30 per person, which is $15 each because it's a two-year certification. So it only cost them $15 a year. So we were able to save some money on that. So. Okay. Joe? Um, actually, it's kind of old and new, but I was curious on the um, scholarship we put aside for Elkton High School. I know we're getting towards graduation time. Commissioner Gibbons, do you know um, if they selected the uh, person that will be receiving? They had a meeting today in the next couple of days, and they uh, put together a staff who will be going through that. So they should let us know something who's going to be the recipient of that, and it should be in the next few days. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I have. I'd like to commend the uh, Parks and Rec for an excellent um, recital that was um, presented this last weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Again, they've done a great job in thanking the um, Elkton High School for allowing them to use the facility. And that's the place to get Mm -hmm. There's a complaint when people get out of the cars, uh, particularly females in many instances, when they go into the post office, there's a house on the diagonal side of the street, and the men sit out there, and sometimes they say things to people that's unnecessary, and these people have a concern about that. Okay, thank you, sir. Anything else? Hearing nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. This meeting is adjourned.